All right, uh, I can share my screen right now. Okay. Yeah, can you see my screen now? Yeah, we can. Okay, sounds good. Okay, you can uh, enlarge the screen if you want. Yeah, I'll go for the presentation mode. Yeah. Uh, can you see the presentation mode, complete one or? Uh, I can just see oh, one okay. corner. Let, yeah. Okay, let me take this one out. Because I'm using this monitor here. Now? Yeah, perfect. That's perfect, right? Great, thanks. Yes. Uh -huh. And now we'll be sending the link. And uh, once everyone joins in, we'll start at 5 p.m. Sure, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, so we'll start in a bit once everyone joins. Sure.
Uh, so we'll uh, meet for uh, wait for two more minutes and then begin.
Okay, so we'll begin. Uh, Dr. Madan, I would request you to share the uh, CPT. Can you see my screen? Uh, yeah, you could uh, switch to the presentation mode. Yes. Just a minute. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Rotractor Sanjana Rao, Director at Digital Communications at the Rotaract Club of Caduceus. So I welcome each one of you here for uh, the session on conquering cancer with AI. I uh, know all of you are extremely excited to know what AI is and the wonders that it does in the field of medicine. With us here, we have Dr. Madan Tabiru, who is the Senior uh, Director at Research at Rakuten India. Welcome, sir. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Sanjana. Can you he hear me well? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, great. It's a, uh, it's a great opportunity to interact with the future doctors here. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Uh, quickly, uh, briefly uh, talk about myself. Uh, I am uh, Madan. I am actually heading the research lab at Rakuten. Uh, how many of you know about Rakuten? All right. Uh, it's, a, it's a global e-commerce company. Uh, like in Japan, they're just like uh, Amazon of Japan. So 94% of the Japanese populations are our customers. So Rakuten is not only an e-commerce giant, and also it has been very well, uh, uh, very well known in other media, fintech. And one more question: How many of you are big fans of Barcelona, FC Barcelona? Yeah, we have one answer here, saying the sponsor of Barcelona. Yes. So we are also big uh, sponsors of Barcelona. We are into media, and we are also uh, into fintech. And also, we have entered into this uh, uh, medical side, uh, especially in conquering cancer. So our, uh, our CEO's father uh, has died of cancer and where our CEO had spent a lot of time in understanding uh, why uh, this cancer comes and how can we really cure that? Is there any medicine? So what are the different tools and technologies that can help these doctors and uh, physicians, surgeons to understand the kind of dynamics around this cancer? Uh, if you can quickly uh, talk about all these things, um, uh, for all these things, the major part, I'm, I'm not an MBBS doctor. I'm a doctor by PhD. My, uh, my PhD was in robotics. And I had spent my time in, uh, uh, in a lot of my time in uh, solving problems using this activity. So many times when I was talking to so many people, when I say, hey, artificial intelligence, whether it is related to doctor or whether it's related to e-commerce, everybody says that, yeah, it's a robot. So the first picture that comes to their mind is, yeah, artificial intelligence means it's a robot. But many people ask me this question that, what exactly does it do? I'm actually getting a WhatsApp message and I'm opening my door with a face recognition. Is it AI? So how can we utilize this? So there are so many questions. I'm sure you people must have had very good knowledge in that. But for those many of you, who may not have the complete understanding of this AI, I just pick very, a very in, uh, small time to go through that. Okay, can I do that, Sanjan? Yeah, so uh, you can begin speaking about AI because we as medical students are yeah. extremely curious to know what is the role, you know, what wonders it does in our medical field. So you could start speaking about it. Yeah, definitely. That's a good question. It's not only medical field. Uh, nowadays, uh, AI is doing wonders in every field, right? Just because of uh, yeah, just because of uh, uh, the advent of uh, new technologies, new data, new smartphones. Especially, you are able to talk to your friends over video, and so many technology advancements. Definitely, we should talk about the intelligence. So, if I talk about intelligence, okay. You may say that, hey, this girl is intelligent. This boy is intelligent. He's able to solve this problem in a few minutes. So people have their own definition. In 1952s, okay, if a device like this, which was actually doing a computation, 
very fast okay just like a sekundara devi who is actually like a human computer people call it right if anybody is doing such kind of computation they call it an intelligent if you take this one in where caveman he was inventing a fire it's also an intelligence and today a person who, who wants to go from one place to other place self driving cars is called also an intelligence and a machine that was actually helping to travel is also an intelligent machine so the definition of intelligence is actually upgrading every day okay so now if at all i want to understand a human body people used to pierce that metal into your body that's you may call in your terms is surgery right just to understand yeah. the body the dynamics of your body at cellular level at cells level and at a very uh, at a very detailed level until unless you cut you pierce the body and see what is happening is is introduced in 1800s now there are new machines had come up into the into the medical field right if i want to really see that what is the body temperature so they keep one machine here they want to see that one so it is just like how better they want to understand that one so where exactly this intelligence goes here in especially in medical field the main objective of this particular intelligence is that just like when this particular cart was not available people used to walk for hundreds of kilometers now machines are available now we are having a very advanced cars so these are the tools to accomplish some objective if you want to talk to your father your parents your friends so there is a tool that is a mobile phone which is acting like an intelligent machine for you to connect tomorrow a patient comes to you and who expresses that hey i have a lot of uh, pain in my neck and i have a, a, a different uh, a behavior there is a different abnormalities in my body so how do you really understand that you need some set of tools those may be intelligent tools to understand that medical right so the main junction that comes between the artificial intelligence and medical field is that how better we can utilize and develop the tools those are intelligent enough to connect and understand the human behavior okay so that is that is where uh, i can start so quickly if i if i just want to give you what exactly an intelligence behavior uh we are humans right so just to take this particular simple exercise a very quick task you okay somebody comes and tells that hey this particular one is an intelligent one so i would first really go to this particular chart and ask them that all right is it thinking like a human okay is it thinking like a human and is it thinking optimally for example i'll give you a very quick simple example in your apartment you have an elevator right so you get into that elevator and you press the button right ninth floor so the elevator takes you to the ninth floor right so it's an intelligent machine but for example it understand the same elevator understands this hey you press the wrong one your apartment floor is 10 as long as intelligently just like a human who actually recommends that particular one that particular apartment that means it is thinking like a human my hand got stuck in the apartment doors even then the uh, the machine uh, that particular sorry elevator door even though the elevator is moving up it's not thinking like human right it is just thinking like a machine i am driving a car a person comes onto the road i just slams my brakes just i am acting like an intelligent tomorrow an intelligent machine behaves thinks like a human then we can call it as an artificial intelligent machine and you are making a surgery you are sitting down here and you are making a machine and it is just cutting and doing the surgery like a human then it is acting like it's a doctor right it is just acting like a doctor that means it is an intelligent machine so any machine which thinks and acts like humans are called artificial intelligent machines okay quickly i want you to just to give you a small example you have this uh, uh, alexa right at your home so where do you place this one in this one so when i say alexa play my um, some some nice carnatic music so then 
is it like acting like a human or thinking like human just take this example and see that there are unmanned cars apple siri okay if you can actually divide them into different components okay and autopilot okay who acts just like optimally it is in a different intelligent machine okay so if you can place that one then you can say that yes if it is a thinking like humans and acting like humans then it is a machine that is an artificial intelligence machine okay so how many of you have seen these movies perhaps you may have seen this one right if i talk about this particular machine where the big debate of the machines is that this particular researcher the professor who may not have kids and he just wanted to have a robot just like uh, a robot just like behaves like his own kid so he builds this kid and many of you may have seen the movie uh, uh, this uh, south indian movie robo right rajnikanth's movie right so there also if you observe you can build a machine but it may not have that kind of consciousness like a human the sentiments right feelings so in that movie he actually gives one kind of an instance that the robot behaves a, a kind of affection towards that particular actress i sure i so it is a kind of a feeling that it is giving to a machine right so the main uh, the main problem if you actually see that we can build all these intelligent machines intelligent uh, 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 medical uh, uh, systems instruments but do they really think like you is the question that comes here okay if you if you watch these movies you will get some kind of understanding that what exactly this artificial intelligence and definitely many of you are here the fan, uh, following this star wars and everything right so these machines are how much they are actually intelligent so quickly nowadays if you see the real intelligence okay you may have seen that face detection when you upload your photo in facebook it literally it identify that face hey your your friend is here so it is tagging that right so these are all different kinds of intelligence now the medical imaging part if i quickly talk about here okay so the main idea here is that i just wanted to quickly go to the particular slide okay these are all uh, if it is required i will just uh, come to that so we are mainly uh, interested in personalization in curing diseases the main idea here is that today i am going to a doctor and say that hey i am having headache and i am having this symptom the doctor writes a prescription i go to the drug store medical or medical store and i ask them hey give me this particular medicine but the future we are actually expecting it to be something like a personalized medicine just like your other card you go to a medical store and say that hey my medical number is m001 so for this particular one can you please can you please give me the medicine which is only personalized to me so which means that the, today we are all trying to discover this medicine for the population of the people but not at the personalized level if you go to amazon website and there you are getting so many recommendations right based on your previous purchases based on your recent purchases and it predicts and you may be interested in this one similarly understanding the human's behavior we are actually identifying we are predicting it what is that person is going to buy in my amazon website similarly we wanted to see that what is that medicine that is more useful this particular person okay so given that how exactly we can really accomplish this one so uh, the main idea is that how can we just use these ai tools can we build these ui tools for this personalized treatment one of the personalized treatments that we are considering here is curing cancer so that is where we are actually right now the research is going on so do you have any questions please yeah that's extremely interesting so uh, i would like to ask does how do you think ai is helping the future of medicine discovery and how will it help future doctors like us okay to answer this question uh, do you know how exactly an experiment is being conducted in drug discovery for example i will take this i will take the same example assume that i am diagnosed with cancer okay assume that now 
the drug so far it is discovered to cure that cancer it may work for other person may not work for me oh. right so okay. so many trials are being conducted nowadays so there they give that particular or uh, different types of uh, different types of treatments like the chemotherapy and photoimmunotherapy so different types of treatments they are giving that particular drug it may work and it may not work you you are actually taking a chance here so instead of conducting that experiments on the humans okay can we really develop a drug okay that with the help of this particular algorithm based on the my previous medical history i should be able to predict that hey this drug works 80% with a it with 80% probability that this particular drug works for this particular person so how do you really discover that so here it is what the way we are actually trying to solve this problem we want to solve this problem in different uh, ways okay these are all the different types of analysis that we conduct here for example the first moment i i go to i go to the doctor and i visit the hospital i register that hey i am a cancer patient so first they take a biopsy from my body okay and now they want to see that how exactly the cells cancer cells and these are called the tumor cells and non tumor cells are interacting okay so what i do here is that i actually give the drug inject the drug to the patient and i see that how these cancer cells are actually interacting with each other within the timeline so in order to really conduct such kind of a very micro level analysis where you may have millions of cells in your body where the tumor is there it's practically impossible for you to really estimate that which one of them are cancer cells and also you know that cancer cells are growing uncontrolled way right and in that situation how exactly you can really expect that for example i will give you a simple example when you are crossing a road a vehicle is coming at a speed you really estimate at a length should i really run or should i walk to cross the road so that the objective is not to meet the accident right it's a kind of a dynamics that is there in your mind and in the similar way if i give this particular drug to this particular person whether this particular cancer cell is actually how fast it is actually going and interacting with the uh, this particular drug is going to interact with the cancer cell you understand my point so these kinds of equations we generally model it in more, more just like a mathematical way so if you talk f is equal to ma that you use the force and mass and acceleration is a simple equation we also want to identify that particular equation among the cancerous and non cancerous cells all right Uh, so yeah go ahead uh, uh can you stop presenting uh okay you can present again i think it just went off yeah sure can you see my screen now yeah sorry for the interruption we will continue yeah so sorry some kind of uh, last minute changes i think uh, this happened maybe i can just quickly so the idea here is that uh, currently as i mentioned earlier also right since you asked about the future medicine the current medicine is that it is actually working on a set of patients and we are giving a therapy right and we will okay. see that who is actually going no effect effect and adverse effect right in future it is going to happen something like i should be able to build that particular me medicine at the personal level personal level means according to that particular patient True. right so now i would say something like this um in 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 one particular human body the type of cancer cells okay there are something like a pdl1 and a different types of uh, uh, cancer cells are there right so for all these cancer cells we wanted to identify how exactly given this particular medicine they are actually going to affect for that this is a just like a biopsy image okay which is just like uh, your blanket size okay and once you take the biopsy out of the body 
there is a machine which actually converts that particular biopsy into a, a big size image. Now, there are pathologists who generally go and just, if you can look at these uh, blue squares, right? So this, this just they will go and identify the regions and say that, hey, this is a, a region which is having a cancer. It's a cancerous region and it's a, it's a non-cancerous region. So they manually go and do it. So according to our understanding, um, one pathologist takes almost like a 30 hours on one particular image. So if one pathologist is spending 30 hours on one image, just imagine for 100 patients how much time it requires. We are building these kinds of algorithms. Those can just come identify the cancer regions by replacing pathologies within five minutes. So that is, that, is, that is what we wanted to accomplish. So to answer your question, in the future, if at all we wanted to utilize these algorithms, which can actually discover these cancer cells. And once we give this drug, it should be able to identify the dynamics among the cancerous and non-cancerous cells. We need some kind of a mathematical models. So we are building those mathematical models. That is the way we are building the intelligence tools to conquer the cancer. Did I answer the question? Yeah, this is amazing. So to my understanding, what I've understood, I have one question. That is, do you think the AI will replace doctors or surgeons in the future? No, not at all. Okay. Uh, which means, for example, if I go back 100 years back, there were hardly, I think, uh, not hundred years back. Okay, if you if you just go fifty years back, when people wanted to communicate, how they used to communicate, they used to communicate with a with a postal way of writing letters, post it, and it goes right. But now, it has come in such a way that I'm able to communicate within seconds. Correct. It is just a tool. It's not going to replace, right? And as and also the human body is actually composed of billions of cells. If at all you wanted to understand the interaction among these cells, okay, that was not possible earlier for a doctor to really go into the details. But with the help of this AI, you are able to understand much better way. It does not mean that a tool will come and completely uh, uh, replace the doctor and it will act like a doctor and which is very far from now. So it's very difficult to replace the human, but it is actually coming up as a tool for the doctors or surgeons to understand these dynamics inside the body. So my answer is no. Okay, so I'm quite clear on that now. So uh, my next question was, uh, what role does AI play in discovering cancer? Yes, as I mentioned, um, if I quickly go here, okay, I'll show you that image analysis, the role that you asked, right? Yeah. Let us say this is, this is, this is uh, you, you can see here, right? There are so many cells here, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I can show it to a doctor and the head doctor, can you identify how many of them are PDL1? How many of them are uh, non CK? And how many of them are uh, 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 pan CK cells? How many of them are? So, can anybody identify them with very human thing? Just a naked eye, anybody can identify them? No. And can you at least count these cells and tell me in next five seconds how many cancer cells are there and how many non cancer cells are there? No, right? So now the, every, every cell is having a nuclei, right? And we wanted to just use some sort of algorithms here. The A is actually taking up that one. And if you can see the final output here, these are all the different cells with the different boundaries. Okay? So first, given this image, I should be able to identify from the nuclei how quickly I can say that these are different cells. But still, my problem is not at solved. Okay, a doctor who looking at this one, yeah, these are all cells, but I'm not sure which one of them are fancy and which one of them are PDL one. Correct. 
So we apply some advanced methods, those are available. It's not, not necessary for you to really understand the backend part of it, the engine part of it, but it at least helps people to identify them that, hey, these are all PDL1 cells. These are all non-tumor cells, and these are all the total number of cells, those are available. Okay, so now the, the, fun, the, the, the interesting point here is that when we actually get this particular uh, image, this is the image, and one particular blue square is this particular part. Okay, so now what we do here is that, let us say I'm a cancer patient, uh, on day one, they take my biopsy and come to a conclusion that with my this algorithm and AI, they say that, all right, uh, this particular person is having total uh, 23 cancer cells, okay? Can you see my screen now? Okay, let us say 23 cancer cells within this non-tumor cells. For example, what the measure they have is that given this particular portion, uh, let us say 10 cancer cells given 100, can 100 non-cancer cells. Then they say that, all right, these non-cancer cells, okay, there are non-cancer cells uh, like the T cells are also very good cells, right? They go and fight with these cancer cells and try to try to uh, try to uh, control the growth of the cancer cell. They kill the cancer cell, right? So now, if at all I want to understand, on the day one I have I have I have got this particular number of cancer cells are ten out of hundred, and after the drug is given to the patient, again I will take the same biopsy. I will get the new image, okay? With the new image, again, my algorithm goes and identifies, all right, last time there were 10, now they are actually 20. Oh, the number of cancer cells growth is not yet controlled. That means this drug is not working for him. So at least I can actually see that. Then the question comes here is that why this drug is not working for him? Then in that case, what we do is that we will go back and do is the gene expression analysis. Okay. And we'll see at the genes level, okay, given that particular drug, which genes are upregulating and which genes are downregulating. So these are all kind of an indicators for us to see that whether this particular drug is working out or not. Okay, for that we conduct a different uh, cohorts of uh, patients and we actually say that which one of them are responding to that particular drug, then we will go into their particular uh, genes level and see that how, how many of them are actually working. So these are all a kind of a, a very big flow, a big workflow, right? If at all you want to do that one, by the time, or it may take three months for one particular patient and it may take six months, so can we minimize that time to a week? Okay, that's that is that is that is how we actually play this and identify that. Okay, so uh, why do you think AI is important in the field of medicine? Like why AI? Like I do understand it's extremely important, but why? Like do you have any explanation for that? Yeah, it's it's. A as I mentioned here, AI is a tool, okay? And to understand a particular patient's behavior before, drug, before the drug injection and after the drug injection, at least I come to know what is happening with the help of a tool. So there, this particular tool will help me, which will which will completely automatically, just like an elevator, where you press the button, it will take you and stop you at the ninth floor. The moment a patient comes to my hospital, okay, I take the biopsy just to put into this particular tool and I just start this one and it will give me the complete set of reports with respect to the his, uh, different cells behaviors and the different uh, how these cells are acting and what is the growth of it, how many cells are dying and what are those reactions. In order to understand all these things, it's very difficult for one human to solve these problems. So hence, AI is very important to replace these things. 
right so uh would you want to explain something more about ai you can continue yeah sure definitely and uh, what, quickly i wanted to really give you some examples on uh, uh, something like this so if you look at this one okay uh many of you really see this one right um the question comes is that learning okay i'll just uh, i'm not sure whether i can play this video or not yeah i can play this video this is just a born baby if you look at him okay so it, if you if you look at this one it is an experiment that was conducted where they wanted to understand how if if you want to really build a machine that is intelligent the first fundamental thing that comes to all of us is how exactly we can make that machine to learn uh i will actually go back to this example of a robo movie i'm sure many of you had watched that rajnikanth movie right where he teaches the robot just like when you are born your mother or father teaches okay and the way they teach you the language that the way they teach you how to walk these are all different types of teaching where you are learning right but can we really build machines those are just like this born baby okay the born baby by the mo the moment the father is actually showing the tongue outside and even it is doing the same imitation this is called imitation learning okay in order to build these uh, kinds of systems artificial intelligence system whether it is in medical or you take a robot or anything the fundamental thing comes for all of us is that how we can make the systems to learn okay so so many people call it as some people call it the imitation learning imitation learning is one of the one of the interesting concepts many babies just first actually looking at a dog they know that they don't know the difference between a dog and a cat they just look at and see that one here it has a uh, four pillars something like that we call them legs and uh, the cat is also having some four four pillars right the way they walk and based on that the baby really gets a kind of a new knowledge and when mother comes and tells her this is a cat this is a dog so that means they understand the difference between a cat and dog with a language so these are all there are so many areas of research that people are actually trying to understand how babies are actually learning can we really build any artificial intelligence system just like a human that is what we were discussing by understanding how the human brain is working so so many people started building a brain by connecting different wires and uh, uh, all these things uh, uh, diodes and everything and silicons and everything but even then can they really replace mother can they really replace a doctor no because the kind of a learning that we are actually getting is a very complex way of understanding different patterns in the world interactions with the world all these things are actually conceptual structures are coming into our world and then we are becoming like an intelligent person right so the idea here is that tomorrow if at all i want to replace a doctor then i have to really understand that how he is acting how he is taking the decisions how he is treating the patient so all these points i should be able to collect it so this is what the people earlier used to call it an expert okay generally what happens is that any person who has who crosses 60 years of age he accum he comes with a lots of knowledge okay lots of knowledge and this complete intelligence of this person okay a new non expert like a, a, let us say he is an expert do doctor expert surgeon okay in this medical field who is 70 years old now the kind of uh, learnings that he has if at all i want to really utilize his 
intelligence and knowledge for my doctor. Suppose I, I call up the doctor and say that, hey doctor, a, I got a patient who is having this problem. Okay, then immediately the doctor says that, hey, 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 uh, I, I got the similar case previously. Can you start doing this way? So he gives some sets of rules to the junior doctor, right? So now the question here is that, I don't know where this surgeon, I don't know where this junior doctor, can we build a system that can help these junior doctors. This is one of the AI systems that people are actually trying to build. So this doctor gives the complete sets of rules in a big database. And this doctor comes and tells that I got a patient who is having these symptoms. Can I really use that one? So there is an inference engine which we actually build and this non-expert doctor can utilize. So there are so many ways people are trying to solve the problems. Okay. And these systems are kind of AI too, if I quickly talk about it. Okay, yeah. All so, right. uh, yeah. So would you like to uh, tell your experience about, you know, working with AI, especially in the cancer wing, what challenges you faced and, you know, how was your experience? Uh, especially uh, when it comes to, um, okay, I have worked uh, in multiple domains, as I mentioned in robotics to this e-commerce, and, and this to uh, uh, medical field. For me, the only challenge that I, I see here is that how, how, how better we can understand the patterns. If I talk about e-commerce, in e-commerce, we wanted to understand the patterns of multiple behaviors of different age groups of different uh, uh, demographics of the people wanted to buy the products, right? Which is very complex. When it comes to robotics, it's a building an unmanned car, they're understanding the different uh, patterns of where to stop, how to take the diversion, how to park my car, taking those self decisions. This is a very complex. Similarly, when it comes to cancer, it's much more complex just because the number of cells, the number of the types of behavior of the human body is not very well understood even today. At least if I know the medicine for this particular cancer, I could save millions of people definitely in the future, right? But how better I can understand the complexity of these cell interactions? I'll give you an example. It's a case happened that in one of the drugs of, that we were actually discovering, we gave it to the patient. We took, we used the AI algorithm and we saw that, all right, this particular patient is responding well to this medicine. So it's a cycle of four weeks. Next week, the same same patient had come. And again, we tested. We found it to be excellent. She's responding. Third week, we had to hear the bad news. She was no more. The complexity here is that first level, the medicine was working. Second level, the medicine was working. And it was the complete evidence we have that the cancer cells were dying. But third week, we did not expect. Can we really identify that beforehand using these algorithms? Can we really save those lives? Even if you take AI algorithm, even if you take the uh, uh, physicians and doctors who were all there, were all watching her, but could not save. Her life. Because there is some kind of interactions out of these billions of cells interacted and we could not save. So my point here is that, yes, it's a very open problem. Understanding the dynamics of these cancer cells and the, how these non-cancer cells are acting, the simple mathematical models alone are not sufficient. We need to really discover better methods. And at least if we can build tools which can be utilized by doctors, who can save millions of lives? It's a very great achievement, at least from the AI side. So, uh, would you call this particular thing the case which happened? Is this like the downside of using AI, or it is complex? I understand. Is what is the downside of AI? The downside of AI is that it's not that completely matured enough. 
how many how many how many emails how many times you you are actually talking over whatsapp just now how many times it got disconnected it's a technology right we cannot completely rely on that assume that i have sent an email but have you received that until in that whatsapp you see double tick mark you see that yeah that person watched so when it comes to technology you cannot be 100% correct if i am if if my ai algorithm is able to predict whether this particular patient is going to die or not going to die that means i am god it's not ai i am able to predict what is happening beforehand right so every ai algorithm is not certain it's not 100% but at least better than something that is that is what the ai is saying yeah okay so uh, we have a lot of questions in the chat box here from our uh, viewers and uh, i'll go through some so the first question we have here is uh, image analysis depends on the quality of data set used to train the model so even if we improve the accuracy with the quality of the data set how can we rely on ai in terms of healthcare uh see um when it comes to the quality of the image if you if i talk about it even if i increase the resolution right now one biopsy is of the size of 50 gb just imagine that how big it is okay quickly i want to go to that um i'm sorry i'm just taking for example this particular one is like a 50 gb it's a high resolution one right even if it is a high resolution it's not like the resolution is actually going to help the ai no there there are there are cases or uh, pathologists uh, explain to us saying that it's not it's not at all the resolution if i have the high resolution it's an easy problem but the only challenge here is that there are some tissues those are all not expressing that particular cancer region or anything today but maybe tomorrow and if i go to the patient and every time i ask him hey can i take the biopsy can i take the biopsy that patient tells that if you start taking the biopsy for every week he will he will he will he will uh, he will express his concern that I may may not be a good doctor so sometimes in those cases my point here is that uh, it's not the resolution it's the it's 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 a much more a uh, complex uh, uh, patterns that these cancer cells are expressing which is very difficult to identify even if i am able to identify these nuclei you look at this one it's a one nu nuclei right but if i go and uh, uh, spend some more time in analysis this is the overlapping of two or three nuclei so it's not 100% accurate here so how accurately that i can identify is also so in those cases we wanted to go and see that blood analysis take the blood samples and do that complete analysis and see uh, without uh, not only the image we want to combine the results coming from different channels to give the confidence is the case that we do sorry if i answered your question yeah okay so uh, another question that we have is that um can we provide a different algorithm for every cancer and diagnose with accuracy yes definitely that that is that is what uh, the uh, the the uh, uh, ultimate objective but as i mentioned if if one algorithm is solving uh, this uh, million dollar cancer problem then i should get nobel prize but it is it is not the case every time just out of 30 patients with the help of our algorithms we are able to identify accurately only 18 patients for the rest of the 12 patients as i mentioned in this case my algorithm is also not able to identify what are their behaviors which means that my algorithm that i'm actually building it which requires much more data okay knowledge okay to solve that particular problem so which one given this complete complex world is still unknown so for each cancer if i start building a kind of a different approaches yes i can accomplish it with some accuracy but still i'm not able to solve the complete problem with 100% accuracy that's that's that still remains there okay so in future we will be able to uh, 
detect it accurately or is it like the process still going on i believe okay i'll give you an example in 2000 and in 2002 if i want to run execute a, a program i used to execute that program in the night 10 o'clock and the morning when i come uh, back to the my research lab around this, uh, 10 o'clock still that program is running okay assume that 12 hours it was taking now today the same program if i want to execute i can execute it in one minute okay which means that if at all i wanted to do these cancer cell computations for example the algorithm that we use it runs seven days my algorithm runs seven days because of the computational day. and there i'm spending almost like fifty thousand dollars per month for certain patients okay if you give me let us say five million dollars today okay i can solve it much faster way because i have to buy more computers and more things you may ask this question hey if that is the case all these government agencies are not investing yes they are investing but that is where the new uh, computation uh, uh, concept that is coming which is quantum computing okay which which can further reduce the computations so the estimations are something like this by 2030 by 2030 we are just like i gave the example in 2003 it was taking 12 hours today it is one minute okay and by 2030 i may be able to identify uh, 300 cancer patients in three minutes perhaps so for all these things you need that computational architecture the algorithm scalability you know all these things are required is my point right okay thank you so uh, we have one question that um when can where can the students the mbbs student uh, students can approach to actually contribute in this field and what options do we have to pursue a career career in this field it's a very good question my suggestion here is that uh, uh, as uh, you do not look at this ai as uh, a mathematical tool or a, ma uh, a, a non-medical tool no just in order to write, you need a pen or pencil on a white paper, right? It is just like a tool. If you want to eat noodles, you need a fork, right? So my suggestion here is that if at all you wanted to really go advanced in this uh, field, just try to understand that how this particular artificial intelligence tools have been implemented. There are so many startups have started in this area where they are building these different tools and most of these startup CEOs are doctors like you, surgeons like you. They know they, they know the fundamentally the domain knowledge, and they, with the help of some uh, engineers, they're able to build and solve very interesting problems. So in order to really pro process in this one, there are very good uh, tutorials and online classes are available. Uh, and, and just like, uh, you are learning how to drive a car, which is definitely useful for the rest of your life, right? This AI is also just like a tool which requires for you to really progress in your career, whether it is medicine, manufacturing, uh, education, media, any field that you take. This AI is actually the intelligence that you are generating only based on the data. And nowadays, people are generating terabytes of data. Okay, in this particular uh, one hour session, I'm sure we must have generated 300 GBs of data where many people are asking text data, video data, discussions, PPT, all these things, right? So similarly, uh, these are the tools which requires the data, which data, the data is abundant nowadays. So please try to understand how this data plays different roles and hence you would definitely enjoy this to you. Okay. Okay, so I'll be taking one last question and uh, later uh, you guys can put up any questions you have in the uh, groups that we have and Dr. Madan will be, would love to answer them. So one last question is that uh, if in future AI tool is adopted for fast diagnosis, then will it be still necessary to double check by manual method by pathologist or doctors? Definitely, definitely. That's a very good question. Now, whatever the, uh, there is a, we are actually uh, trying to get the approval from the government before we actually market the drug, right? 
what are the drugs that we are doing and what are this particular complete ai tools that we are building it, it is highly possible that ai could be wrong so a human has to really go and assess that one right so a pathologist has to verify and give his certificate that this ai is working like any other pathologist so for that the way we actually evaluate any machine learning algorithm okay so um, this is a machine and this is a human we give the same patient's data to both the machine and the human pathologist both of them independently work on that both of them come back and like that we conduct this experiment at least with with 20 different pathologists on the same data it is highly possible that human error also possible right in those situations okay. so we see that uh, which one is actually performing better so this is a very common standard way people actually conduct it. so just if uh, if you have time i wanted to quickly show you one interesting thing here so people were people were actually telling that hey uh, my 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 ai is an intelligent one then people act actually in order to say that whether your machine your your ai is doing correct or not this turing is a person who actually developed a system called a turing test now today if i build an algorithm ai algorithm and i come to all of you doctors who use this one you people first ask me this question hey you are calling it as an ai algorithm did it pass a turing test if i say yes that means you are actually taking a confidence that all right this particular algorithm i can use without any problems okay but on the downside of it people have conducted the experiments okay this is called a chinese room experiment okay and to to just defeat this particular during test i will give you an ex quickly an example okay this is the person an english man who is sitting inside a room this is called a chinese room okay and he doesn't speak chinese okay so now these people started giving him through this window a chinese words and this person inside is sending the answers through this window the particular answers to the the conversion of this particular chinese okay so then these people say that all right this person who whatever the machine that is there inside they don't know it is a human that is machine machine inside it knows chinese okay it knows chinese but what happened here is that when they open the door they find this particular person these people started speaking chinese he says that i don't know chinese i can't speak chinese but he is able to convert that he is acting like a chinese person he is acting like a human or he is acting like a chinese human but he doesn't know chinese that means they, that means he proved that in the similar way if i come up with an algorithm to you and say that hey this algorithm works and uh, it is actually passing the turing test and uh, if I, my algorithm tells that i don't know what is cancer that means it doesn't make sense right so right. there are there are different tests people are conducting even if you see recently uh, th there is ibm watson test anybody who is uh, very interested just watch that video IB ibm watson okay there are two competitors who are actually just answering the questions and this ibm watson is another ai algorithm it was competing with those grandmasters these intelligent things and it was able to answer much better than these two intelligent people it passed the turing test it passed the turing test and the same ibm watson has been used by many hospitals in us for treating many patients by using that ai machine so my answer to your question is that yes, we have to pass this Turing test with the pathologist. Sorry, it's a long answer, but yeah, I hope that is helpful. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, I hope uh, we have answered most of the questions. If we haven't, then uh, don't worry. You can always put them on the groups and Dr. Madan will answer them sometime. So uh, right now we'll be sending in a form. Uh, it's a feedback form, fill it. And now uh, I request all of you to switch on your cameras and uh, display the picture that was sent on all the groups and we'll take a group picture. Uh, Dr. Madan, if you could uh, stop presenting this, then we can take the group picture. All of you can switch, switch on your cameras.
Dr. Madan, in you can switch on your camera. You can display this picture on the screen, all of you. And uh, Shayan will be taking the screenshot. Uh, just a second, guys. Just let me know when we're done. Uh, Sanjana, can you click uh, the screenshot? Actually, I have a uh, yeah. word. Okay, so we'll be putting up a form right now and uh, do fill it up. And thank you so much, Dr. Madan, for being here with us. It was an absolute honor to have you here. And I hope your doubts about everyone, your doubts about AI have been cleared out. I'll just send the form. Don't leave the meeting because you will be getting the uh, certificate if you fill this form. So just a minute. And also make sure you don't leave the groups that you've created because certificates will be distributed over there. Just a minute. All right. Uh, with this, can I uh, leave? No problem. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you yeah, so much. Great. Yeah, great. Thank you, guys. And uh, I wish you all the best for any kind of uh, suggestions, any kind of increase. Feel free to refer to me. I'm there always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm just sending the form. Uh, hope you received it. Uh, the link will be open for 30 minutes. And you can fill it up. And also make sure you stay on all of the groups because you'll be sending the certificate there. Thank you so much for attending. It was great having all of you here. If all of you have any questions, you can always put it up on the group. Dr. Madan will definitely answer them. <laughs>